What's going on guys? It's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you a meta analysis for the May 2018 format. Now, one big caveat going into this video is that at the time of recording, we could get a ban list at any possible moment. With my luck, we're probably going to get it tomorrow. However, I wanted to make this video because I wanted to discuss the initial impact of Flames of Destruction on the current format that we have because it's definitely going to shake some things up. So I wanted to discuss some initial findings. So be sure if you haven't already to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you guys not only miss the ban list when it does eventually come out but also for any further meta analyses but before we get into it i want to give a huge shout out to my newest patrons as always and we haven't done patreon shout outs in a long time so there's going to be a lot of them so big shout outs today to dean vincent mutt hunter derek carlos scrin and alejandro you guys are the reason that this channel is growing strong and if you guys want to help support me in the channel through patreon then check out the patreon link in the description description below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So I wanted to do this meta analysis a little bit differently than meta analyses I've done in the past because I'm going to throw up the pie chart from the top 32 breakdown of YCS Memphis because this is the solved format that we've come to expect from this point. However, we didn't have Flames of Destruction released for this event. I believe Layer of Darkness came out that same weekend, but Flames of Destruction wasn't legal till a few weeks later. And now that we've had the regionals wrap up from this past weekend, I wanted to discuss Flames of Destruction's initial impact on the format, some trends I've been noticing, and kind of how things are going to start shaking up and what impact they might have on a format that used to look like this. So rather than doing a brand new pie chart and giving you guys some essentially predictions of what I think is going to happen, I'd rather discuss with you the regional tops that I observed, especially the first place decks most notably, and I know those decks don't necessarily translate to YCS level because regionals and YCSs are two very different types of events. However, I love when we get a new set release because depending on how powerful that set is, you're going to see the impact that that set has at the regional level to kind of see what people are thinking moving into this new format before it gets to the YCS level. So we're going to start by discussing essentially the first place deck profiles of all the regionals I was able to find. And then we're going to go ahead and just discuss the impact of those decks and I guess the chances that they have of doing well moving forward into this format. So starting off with first place in Minneapolis, we had Trickstar. Now, Trickstar shouldn't really surprise you that it managed to take first place at a regional because, you know, it's been able to do pretty well across the format as a whole. Arguably, it's one of the, you know, tier one to tier 1.5 decks. It's been able to hang up there with Draco, with Pendulum Magician, because it's just been able to adapt and mold itself to the meta. It implemented playing something like Triple Torrential Tribute, which I think is just a stat but also with Flames of Destruction, it has a lot of new tools at its disposal as well. The inclusion of cards like Infinite Impermanence, which a lot of people are very polarized on the card. Some people think it's absolutely astounding, and the other people, you know, half think that, you know, it's not really living up to the hype. But we're going to talk about Impermanence a little bit later on. Another new set of tools that Trickstar has at its disposal, though, is the Nightmares. And we're going to be talking about Nightmares a lot in this video, because Trickstars now can take advantage of the Nightmares utilizing Scapegoat. And while this may not seem like a big deal, having a wider array of toolbox cards that you can go into off of Scapegoat in your extra deck, aside from cards like Ningirsu and like Borolo Dragon, really gives the deck a lot more flexibility when it comes to Scapegoat. Now, arguably, you could say that, you know, if Trickstars resolving Scapegoat, Goat, they're probably going to win the game anyway, but I think this gives Trickstar a lot more resilience because in the case where it has to go second or Scapegoat isn't being set on turn one, they now have a much wider array of tools to basically just help dismantle boards and take control of the board from that state. And I think that's really impactful for a deck like that. And not to mention, you've still got the fact that you've got all the Trickstar monsters that can also be used as link fodder. But the thing is, we're not really seeing any of the new Trickstar cards from Flames of Destruction being utilized here. And that's because while they are okay if you're focusing on a Trickstar Link centric strategy, in terms of competitive viability, until we get something like Carabine, I really don't see the other Trickstar cards being included. I could be wrong, this is the initial stages of the format, but realistically, I think this is going to be the direction that Trickstar is going to take. And I think Trickstar is really grateful to have cards like the Nightmares. Hell, even uh, Topologic Trisbania is another card they can use to help combat their Draco or any of the matches. Uh, 
uh, matchups that are going to have a ton of back row. Now this moves us on to the next matchup. I believe this was St. Louis and uh, Lost World Dino managed to take first place. Remember we're in one of those formats where realistically any deck can win, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. Sure, we saw Pendulum Magician and Draco at the top and things that have a much higher probability of doing well compared to others, but Dinosaur is still incredibly strong. And so that's another deck, you know, that's just awesome to see still doing well. I mean, again, I don't have to reiterate that Ultimate Conductor Tyranno is just an absolute monstrosity of a card, and really you can't undermine that. Now this is where the video is going to get interesting, because the reason I wanted to do this video is because of the brand new decks that are going to start seeing a lot more play due to Flames of Destruction's release, and one of those is Nightmare Goki. Now, Goki's always been one of those archetypes I've been really excited for, because on paper, the cards basically just beg to be abused by the Link Summoning mechanic, because they just have so much recursion, they do so much searching. Basically, this is an archetype that is tailored towards abusing Link Summoning, but they never really had any good options to go into that were strong enough to warrant playing. And I know some people have tried to make the deck work, but ultimately it hasn't worked up until now, because Nightmare Goki not only took first place here at the Las Vegas Regional, but I believe it also took first place at the Philadelphia Regional. Someone can correct me, but I've heard a few people say that that's the deck that won in Philadelphia as well. And if that's the case, that's just astounding. And I'm going to have the deck profile of the first place Las Vegas player playing Goki Nightmare on the channel, so be sure to stay tuned for that. But the Nightmares are essentially the reason why this deck is viable. When you've got cards like Nightmare Griffin, which is basically just a skill drain on legs, you've got a card like Unicorn that basically is just all around utility to remove any threats through a non-targeting, uh, non actually I think it targets, but a non-destructive means of removal. When you've got Phoenix, when you've got Goblin for an extra normal summon, these are the cards that Goki has needed the whole time, and it's really cool to see now that the archetype is able to make a splash in a format like this. I'm really happy this happened during this format in particular because yeah, you know, Pendulum FDK and all that's running rampant, but this is the format where all of these decks have had the opportunity to shine. And if it was a format, you know, look a couple, you know, formats back, like if it was full power spiral format or even the format after that, I don't think these decks would have really had the opportunity to really show themselves, but I'm really happy that we're going to see that. And I really hope you guys look forward to seeing that deck profile. Now this this moves us on to probably the other big contender here that a lot of people are excited for, Altergeist. I think Altergeist probably has the most potential out of all the decks we're going to be discussing today. I managed to get first place at the Seattle Regional, but aside from that, I think Altergeist took up a very high number of top cut slots across all of the regionals that took place this past weekend. Even though it might not have gotten first anywhere other than Seattle, I think that definitely says how excited people are for Altergeist and the potential that this deck has. Multifaker is an incredibly powerful card and really is what makes this deck viable. I think the biggest threat that Altergeist has moving into this format is that Draco is so dominant because I feel that Draco really can kind of keep Altergeist in check. I mean, if they set up a masterpiece that's trap immune, then it's really going to be difficult for Altergeist to perform well. However, the deck plays a ton of traps, so if it goes first against something like Pen Magician, it's going to have a really easy time controlling the game. And keep in mind in the OCG, they have Diagram and Masterpiece banned, so Draco isn't even a factor over there, and Altergeist is one of the top decks, well I guess before the Brandish Maidens took over, but it is still a deck that is able to compete in the higher tiers of competitive play. So definitely something to keep your eye on, and Infinite Impermanence in tandem with Multifaker is one of the most insane going second hands you can possibly have, setting up two disruptions while your opponent's making their first turn before you've even done anything, that's something that's going to be very appealing for any player. So keep your eyes on Altergeist because I I have high hopes for them. We're going to have to see how the interaction between Draco and Altergeist work, but ultimately I think the deck is still going to do very well. I want to wrap up this video with a personal favorite of mine, Nightmare Spiral. Now Nightmare Spiral actually took some top cut slots while it didn't win a regional, it actually took second place at the Spain Nationals, and this is really really cool because now Spiral has the ability to go first very well once again, whereas before a lot of players were tailoring it to going second because 
The best play was realistically to do something with like Galaxy Tomahawk, or I mean, I guess you could just end on Sleeper and that's pretty decent, but it's not the best going first deck once the deck got hit on the ban list. However, the Nightmares once again are coming to the deck's rescue, and now you're able to end on boards with like Griffin and Firewall Dragon and Trigate Wizard and Sleeper, and you still have cards in hand. You're going like plus five for the turn. I'm gonna do a deck profile on the deck because I'm super excited for it. And that's another deck you definitely should keep an eye out for because it's definitely going to make a resurgence. I think a lot of people are excited to play it, especially since a good amount of people love Spiral, but Overall, I think this is really cool to see so many different strategies emerging from Flames of Destruction's release, and we're going to have to see what comes of it. But guys, that's it for the video. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about these results, and let me know if you guys like this new format where I'm evaluating the regional tops from the past week. And I can even make this a segment called the Regional Report. We could make it like all official with like fancy news sounds and shit. I think that might be a pretty cool idea. If you guys want to see that be sure to let me know but if not i think this was just nice to kind of mix up the meta analysis a little bit since the format is a little bit stale a little bit solved the flames of destruction might be what we need to shake things up so guys thank you so much for watching the video be sure to like the video as always subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content and if you guys found this video informative consider backing me on patreon because just by pledging only one dollar a month you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content so thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.